Welcome to the Peach Tree Morning Show by DCI. It's a wise way to start the day. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Peach Tree Morning Show. Today it's Thursday, July 16th, and we have guests. The first guest is Katie Fetchenheyer. She has a degree in design and arts and is doing a lot of the layouts for Diamond Cutter Institute and STIM. She's also a co-manager for the Diamond Cutter Press, which is releasing a lot of Geshe Michael's book. And she is a STIM graduate and in the moment mother and also having a retail shop in Durango, Colorado, the place where everybody needs to go. <laughs> hey, Rimrock is where they need to go. Well, wow, Durango is, I think, nice as well. My name is Brigitte Meyer. I'm from Munich, Germany. I started with DCI when Geschle held the first DCI course in Hamburg, Germany. Since then, I'm studying. I was longtime co-producer for the DCI events in Germany. I'm working as an IT project manager leading international projects with high security. Geshe loves to use the credit card story. <laughs> and uh, I'm co-director of Diamond Mountain and Geshe Michael Roach. Welcome. So Hi. today's question, because I'm German, I choose a German question hey. from Tobias Ruf. Hi Gisela, Ort and Scott. What seeds did I plan to see galaxies and stars away as light years, billions of light years? And what do I project during the day when I see the sun and the moon, possibly Venus and Jupiter? And how comes that I can see stars closer and far away depending on the magnification factor that I switch on on the telescope? Thank you. It's in good German tradition, very philosophical. I hear yeah. three questions here. The first one is, how is it possible that I can see stars and galaxies which are maybe not even existing anymore or light years away? The second one, how does it come that I'm even able to see sun and moon and planets? And the third one, which I find a very interesting and deep one, how is it, what is the karma that I can look through a telescope and then see the stars? magnified. Mm. Do you have any hit on it, Katie? Well, I got really inspired because I just finished a really good sci-fi book about mm -hmm. how to see stars and galaxies that are far away and the only way that they can travel light years away really quickly is using um, sort of their minds because, you know, I can close my eyes right now and my mind can go to my refrigerator and think about what's there. It's not really contained in this space right now. So I would say, um, if you get really good at meditation, this would be one way to do it. You know, Princeton, Stanford, even the UK and US government have spent a lot of money trying to get people to do exactly this thing where they use their meditation skills in order to see things that are far away. And there's actually a new study started by a NASA scientist doing the exact same thing. So I would use this as a pitch to get really good at meditation. <laughs> and I mean, meditation, I would say seeing things that are far away or things that I wanna see in the past or future maybe, that would just be a perk of getting good at meditation, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't be the ultimate goal of meditation. If you reach the ultimate goal of meditation, which would be in reality directly, then you'll be successful in all areas of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were your ideas? <laughs> I found the Zoom factor very interesting that you just get things farther and nearer. And I remember Geshela when you explained it that when we approach a door, for example, so how is it that the door is all getting bigger and bigger and that every second you project a different size picture. And I thought transferring it to the good and the bad things in my life. It's sometimes they are far away and they are sneaking into my life and they are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think that's very comparable. And I ask myself, how, what is what special aspect of seed ripening makes it happen that 
sneaking into it, like if you make the zoom factor bigger and bigger. And then we have different occasions in our life where the good or the bad things are suddenly in our face. It's like no warning. It's there like when you meet the man of your dreams or whatever, which is <laughs> suddenly turn around. So I wonder what is the difference in the seed ripening that it happens sometimes in a sneaky way that it's getting bigger and bigger. Like if you put on the telescope or if it's this explosion of seeds. Uh, you know, recently uh, we got to this question in the mixed nuts, this exact question, and it was very exciting for me. And it was difficult to translate actually, but Wordsmith, uh, Professor Wordsmith is uh, <laughs> translating a mind-only text. And the mind-only school is uh, very, they're very interested in this question. So they say, for example, if you see a blue, something blue, let's say a glass of watermelon juice, okay? Mm -hmm. If you see this pink color, uh, you are actually watching part of your own mind. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and so we can almost get used to that. They say the seed doesn't open and send the image out. Yeah. Uh, the image is still inside the mind, you know? And then somebody objected to that and they said, well, why does it seem to be why the distance? It's called Gyang Chewe Noa, which means why do I have the impression of distance? If it's really here, why does it feel like it's one meter away? You know, what's the, where did that come from? And then they say, oh, well, that's, that's also just the seed opening. Mm -hmm. So you have two seeds opening. One seed is opening for the pink color, and one is opening for the illusion of of distance, you know, so that's very interesting, I think. So the seeds could open at the same time. The two seeds for distance and for the color could open at the same time? Yeah, or maybe they're one sixty-fifth of a second apart and we can't tell the difference. Oh, that's interesting. So. so that, like Tobias described it, he is looking through the telescope, he is zooming in and see like the stars which he wants to see suddenly much bigger. So then I would assume that he has the seeds to see the stars which are something beautiful and inspiring for him. In the first moment when he sees them at the sky, the seeds are smaller and when he has the opportunity to really look at them through the telescope he just the seed has more power which then minimizes the distance or the impression of distance yeah i think they call this um detective work you know like if you're gonna do detective work on the distance on the illusion of distance mm -hmm. or on the impression of distance uh if you're gonna do detective work, one of the first steps you always do is uh, when you're trying to find the karma that caused it. Mm -hmm. Well, so what caused this feeling of distance and what causes the change in the focus, you know, from far to near? They would, the first question they will always ask in the ancient times is, do you enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you like it? And some people say, no, I feel scared when the planets are so far away. And then some people say, no, I love it, you know. So then they make the first uh, conclusion that it was either a good deed you did or a bad deed you did. If you enjoy yeah. the stars, then you, if you enjoy the distance changing to the stars because of your telescope, that's because you did something good. Mm -hmm. And if it scares you or makes you uncomfortable, you did something bad. If you don't care much about it, it's a neutral karma. That's the first question they ask, you know. Okay. Then they'll ask about uh, how intense is it for you, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, was it a strong karma or was it a weak karma? Did you do coffee meditation, for example? Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that applies to 
events like meeting a person uh, getting big in your life and then diminishing in your life. Like, it's the same, right? It's the yeah. illusion of uh, distance. Yeah. And I think one way that I've experienced uh, nature, if I want like to make it more intense or beautiful, a really easy way is to just do a little bit of yoga. I've noticed get certain energies flowing and it seems like it gets certain seeds for beautiful things in my environment to open a little bit faster or more intensely. So the stars will actually look more beautiful or closer even. Um, I've noticed I wonder, that. Why is that? What happens in yoga? That Because I, I, I have a similar experience, but why do you think it happens? <laughs> I have an idea that seeds are kind of like nitroglycerin. So if you bring or you, if you make, start thinking about good things, then it makes good seeds go up. Or if you start getting in a mind state that's a little bit negative, I feel like it causes similar seeds to go off. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, and also it just brings energy to them, like a little mama chicken on the egg. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. That's pretty good. I have noticed if you're gonna have a business meeting or you're gonna give a presentation to the Peachtree Cafe morning show, it helps if you do yoga before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You feel more uh, lively, right? Mm -hmm. And it kind of keeps thinking about the pen more. <laughs> oh, it kind of keeps thinking about the pen more. Yeah, and I, you know, we said the illusion of distance, but uh, the distance is no more an illusion than the stars are. The stars are also an illusion, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. I, I think uh, stars are a good example, what Tobias said, uh, about that it might take years before we see the image come to us, and maybe that star has already died. Oh. But if you think about it, if images are coming to my eye, like I'm looking at Katie and Brigitte right now, then if it takes time for the image to get to my eye and then the image to get to my brain, then every moment I'm looking at something which is already gone. So actually I'm never living in the present time. And then uh, there's an interesting question if you want to know Nagarjuna from that. Let's, let's uh, go deeper with Tobias, okay? <laughs> uh, so the only way that one thing can affect another thing is if they both exist, right? So if, if, uh, if the pen is going to push the cell phone, then they both have to exist. You know, if the pen doesn't really exist, then it, it can't push the cell phone, you know? So, so for, a, for Tobias to see a star, then that star has to be pushing the sense consciousness. Mm -hmm. But the star is already gone. So You see what I mean? So how can you see a star? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's why these Buddhist schools want to say, uh, you're seeing the star from the inside, you know? Because you know, there's no, the star outside is already gone. It cannot touch your, your eye. It cannot touch the, 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 the cells of the eye. The photo cells. Yeah. And kind of like the person who also planted the seed is also gone by the time the seed is affecting you, it seems like. Or it is. Yeah, that's for sure. And then it doesn't seem very uh, like justice, you know. <laughs> Well, uh, you're getting uh, the result of bad seeds that, came, that somebody planted yesterday. Yeah. And it wasn't you. We are almost out of time. Okay. We're two uh, seconds left. Yeah. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. Well, I, I, I would say, it's, I mean, I would say, think there's a, there's a karmic seed opening in Tobias's mind that opens and it creates a star. Mm -hmm. And then a, a seed opens nearby that creates the feeling of distance. Uh, so. 
Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we have had several <laughs> topics regarding how we can, why we can see stars which are already gone. How is it possible that we can look through a telescope and see them even bigger? So uh, the first uh, hit was Katie, which said the more, the more you meditate, the more you can create the ability to see in the future and in that way also be able to see things which might already be gone. Then we talked a lot, how can it be that the, we have seeds which we perceive in different distances and Geshela said the seeds is there's one seed which is producing the star or the thing or the melon juice and there is another seed which influences how far away or how near we experience it. And then we got the third one that how can it even be that a star which is already no longer existing we perceive in the moment, which goes back to the general concept of how we perceive everything which is created by our seeds. It's already gone when it hits our eyes. So the stars are different. And since Tobias sees so many beautiful stars and can watch them through the telescope, he must have planted a lot of good seeds to have this beautiful experience for him. Mm -hmm. uh have I missed I, one, <laughs> I have. I just have one more comment uh, about Katie's meditation comment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you meditate well, uh, you see, we were. What you're feeling? What you're feeling when you say, "If you meditate, maybe you can extend your ability to see farther or deeper stars." But mm -hmm. if you keep meditating. Uh, you you break uh you break a limit called uh, infinity you break through the limit called infinity and then you can see countless stars with no number there's no end to them but you can see them all at the same time in in a few minutes uh you can see all of them one by one even though they're infinite so it seems illogical but uh if you keep going with your meditation uh Tobias, you can have this, you can use this telescope uh, to see stars with no end at the same time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. So, what is the question for tomorrow? I don't remember. Oh, I it? play it. Okay. Yi Ming来自中山海目前在台北，我想请问老师，我遇见一个学习金刚智慧在某区域还蛮出名的读书会代理人，可是他经常说别人的是非无意的语言，我提出来跟对方讨论，这样会不会影响到？是本来有人
then her question is, shouldn't this person admit that they, that they could improve mm -hmm. uh, about this? Or is it okay they just blame me for my bad seat? That's her question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful question, beautiful question. Thank you so much for watching. Please submit your questions to the email address seatquestions at diamondcutterinstitute.com. And then we are also approaching Friday. Please submit your playlist if you have fun for us. Otherwise, thank you. Have a nice day. And thank you, Geshela, for this beautiful insight. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, please come again. It's nice to have people from many different countries. And by the way, if you guys don't send me any good playlist, I'm going to make my own. <laughs> and you will have to listen to Grandpa's Rock and Roll again. So <laughs> you better send me some playlists, Spotify playlists. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Go, go to bed. Go to bed in Germany. Yes. <laughs> I don't mind either. <laughs> Thanks for watching today's Peachtree Morning Show. See you next time.